On today's video, I'm gonna show you a recent big wig build that I've done off camera. We're gonna run through what I use, how it all went together, and I'll show you the final outcome. channel today's video we have the Tamiya bigwig um, this is not my car this is a car that was uh, given to me by a friend of mine to build for his son for his birthday so um, I thought I would do a little feature on the channel so before we chat about what I've done the colors I've used and how I sort of uh, you know, some tips and tricks for those wanting to paint the body um, and a few little build uh, design faults that I have heard other people. Um, one that I built personally, I did have a few issues with the front end. So I'll run through a few of those things, but first let's take some time to admire this beautiful model, and then I'll come back to you and chat about how we got it looking like this and what we used. Please consider liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, your support is very much appreciated and helps the channel grow. Okay, so hopefully you all agree that this is a fantastic looking kit. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's run through what we used. I did put some uh, pictures of this on my Facebook and Instagram page. Got a lot of good feedback, a lot of thumbs up. Um, people really, really like the color scheme. Um, so yeah, if you haven't already checked out my Facebook and Instagram page, Head over there, check those out um, and follow there as well. I do put some sort of updates and builds on there as, um, I, as I sort of get cars ready to put them on YouTube. So I'm not gonna go through a build video today. Um, you know, I built this one off camera, so I just wanted to recap the colors I used, how we came up with this, um, and just basically, um, yeah. It's for a friend of mine, uh, it's his son's birthday, and he wanted to give him a RC car. Um, his favorite colors are blue and silver, so hence why we've come up with a twist on the box art of the big wig. I think it absolutely looks fantastic, and I actually think that it goes quite well, and I think that this looks better than the white, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. The silver works very, very well with the top of the hood cover here, so it does tie in nicely. Um, in my opinion, but you know, everyone's different. Other people don't uh, like box art at all and go something completely different. Um, that's what's good about the hobby. You can customize it to yourself or you can keep it sort of as to what you uh, may remember of as, a, as a child walking to the hobby stop and shop and looking at these models on display. So, what do we do first? I, put, I hit the body with um, well, before we did any painting really, we did the masking. Now, I'll just take the body off to show you. Um, it's a bit of a difficult one to get off, there we go. So obviously, I've backed it all in the blue just so it looks nice from underneath. Um, and so how did we come up with this? Now, I'll put a few pictures of some masking, um, but I'll tell you how we've come about it. So 
Anywhere where you've got multiple color changes that's hidden by a sticker on an RC body, uh, that's probably the best case scenario for painting. Because what you, what you can do, guys, is um, you cut out your decal, you lay it over the top of the body, you can mark as to where that decal is going to sit, um, and then you know that that paint transition between the two colors is always going to be hidden. So um, that's what I did, cut out the decal, marked out roughly where it was going to sit, masked it off, and then I put the decal back over the top as well, um, just to double check that my mask line was going to be accurate. So we did that. Um, most bodies have got the clear protective film, so you can draw on the top of that with, some, with a marker um, and not sort of damage the polycarbonate body. So that's what I do. Um, so once we come up with our masking lines, uh, I always like to spray the dominant colour. But before we did that, I hit the body with two very, very light coats of, I think it's PS53, the Tamiya Lane Flake. Um, so it does have a slight little metallic in it. Um, so uh, I think that's come out nicely. You do have to be very, very careful with the Lane Flake. If you lay it down too heavy, it does run and it gets very, very overpowering. So um, yeah, I think it's come out nice with the amount of flake that we have. So we did two light coats of the Lane Flake. Then what I did was I masked up the side areas with Tamiya masking tape. I cannot stress enough, pay the money and use the Tamiya masking tape. It is well and truly worth it. Then what we did was mask that off. I sprayed um, multiple light coats of the PS16 metallic blue, the dominant color. Then uh, once I was happy with that, I peeled off the masking on the side, I sprayed the whole body, including the side parts in PS12 silver. So in other words, I, I um, painted the silver, I backed the blue with a, a lighter color to give it more pop. Um, and then once I let that dry, I did multiple coats of the silver just to get enough coverage. Then what we did was I backed everything in white um, just to give the silver a nice backing solid color. Then I did a few light coats with the metallic blue just to finish it off nicely. So I think the body's come out absolutely beautifully. Now, um, if I build another big wig, I think that I would go with this color combo personally. I think it looks fantastic. So that's the body. Um, let me know what you think down below in the comments. I think it's come out absolutely awesome. A little bit of a tricky one to cut out, but um, you will find that you really, really have to pay attention to the cutout lines here and probably trim them a little bit more than what Tamiya is giving you just to get enough clearance for the front of the body to sit down over the shock towers. Now, moving on to the chassis itself, um, these the big wig is pretty much a hot shot series car, hot shot front and rear uh, and a drive shaft um, and hot shot bumper bar by the looks very very similar. Um, only this car has that wide tub. Now I do like this, a um, little bit better for off-road rocks and dirt and whatnot but it also allows you to run the 8.4 volt seven cell battery if you wish. If you want a little bit extra um, power, a bit extra speed, you can chuck that seven cell in there or you can just upgrade to a LiPo two cell if you want. Um, because originally the big wig had the Technic old motor and you could obviously upgrade to that seven cell battery for a little bit extra punch. Now, because this is for a young person for their birthday, um, We've swapped out the GT Tune motor and we've just gone for a silver can motor for the meantime, just for the just for his son to get used to driving the car, um, and then at a later date he may upgrade the motor again. A few little issues that um, I have noticed in the past when people have built big wigs is the front here. Um, you can if you don't put the drive shafts in correctly. Uh, when the wheels spin, it will knock and you, and you start to see some rising there. So just pay attention to your instruction manual in those steps. Another thing is the steering. Now, um, this has like a rack, um, geared rack steering um, in it, uh, which is a little bit weird. It's not overly good for turning circle. Um, and you can find you do get a lot of resistance if you don't use 
a decent servo. So make sure you go with a decent servo if you build a big wig. Um, and these gear boots on the side there, just make sure that you, you, know, you trim those enough so there's enough play for them to move up and down your um, steering shafts so there's no binding on there. So that's my tips. Um, another thing that's a little bit annoying, this kit doesn't come with a speed controller, but it does come fully ball raced. So, you know, I'll probably prefer a nice bearing set over a cheap TBLEO2S. So, um, yeah, that, that's my uh, thoughts on that. Good to see bearings, um, and then that way you can put a decent speed controller with a LiPo cutoff if need be. If you do have a spare TBLE O2S laying around, you will have troubles mounting it under this top plate. Now, a big wig that I've built, I had a spare TBLE O2S. I mounted it under here, and I found that it, it, it was very, very hard up against this top cover here. So, um, you know, you can mount it in some other areas in the chassis. Doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, but other than that, it's a fantastic buggy. I actually do um, think that they drive quite nice. Out of the box, they're not overly special, even with that GT Tune 25 turn motor. They are pretty sluggish. But like I said, if you do put up to a 7 cell or a 2S LiPo, you do get some nice punch out of them. And um, yeah, they are a nice, solid um, kit. Definitely, if you're interested in a four wheel drive, um, to me, a car, I do recommend getting your hands on one of these. They're becoming harder to get. Um, they're, I think they've been discontinued um, and you're starting to see people list them for um, crazy money online. This was actually my kit and I sold it to a friend of mine so it's sort of made full circle and I've been able to build it. So that's the big wig. I'll finish off um, with some more pictures of the car. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I think it's absolutely fantastic um, and that's my opinions. I and mean, my tips and tricks if you are looking at building and owning a big wig. Bye.